Hello students, uh, this semester we are going to cover fundamentals of statistical hydrology with me, who uh, Dr. Erman Rukers. Uh, we are going to see in this lecture one uh, the course outputs, what do we need for this course, and it's just like a basic introduction what we are gonna cover in this semester and then we are gonna go through all these subjects and I will give brief introduction of hydrology and we will uh, I think it's gonna be the same thing as uh, last lecture last year last semester lecture which is uh, water resources uh, resource management I guess resource management and uh, hydrology the first part is gonna be this hydrology uh, we are gonna cover the surface flow uh, first atmospheric water then surface flow uh, then groundwater flow uh, then after that we are gonna uh, learn a little bit statistical approach how we are gonna calculate it and with which approach we are gonna use for this hydrograph and so on for the course outputs, this course has been designed to present the principles and applications of hydrology for senior level of civil engineering. And it is expected to have a comprehensive understanding of different components of hydrology and statistical tools useful for hydrology. So at the end of this course, when we complete successfully, we are going to have statistical, statistical tools for hydrology and the, we will learn the components of hydrology. In order to understand the hydrologic processes, first we need to uh, cover Reynolds transport theorem, which you guys see in fluid mechanics uh, courses in your second year. Uh, and which is continuity, momentum, and energy equation. Then we are gonna go through the hydrologic processes, which are atmospheric water, precipitation, evaporation. Then we are gonna see the surface flow, subsurface flow, groundwater flow, and at the end we are gonna see how we are going to uh, use this unit hydrograph in order to understand all these hydrologic processes. After completing uh, hydrologic processes, we need to go through the hydrologic statistics, which is this course main topics is uh, statistical hydrology. So we are going to use these tools, which are statistical parameters, fitting a probability distribution, testing goodness of fit, frequency analysis, reliability analysis. Uh, as we know, you, you took uh, on your sophomore year um, probability class. Uh, so I assume you are familiar with these topics, but I'm going to show very briefly because we are going to use these tools to in order to solve hydrologic uh, problems so we are not gonna go through deeply in these topics just we are gonna use only the formula and then we are gonna just um, copy paste it and modify according to our problem and we are gonna solve our hydrologic st uh, statistics problem before go through the introduction of this course uh, I will suggest two textbooks. The first one is Applied Hydrology by Chow, Maitman and Mays. The second one is Engineering Hydrology by Subramanta. Uh, the first one is the main book of this class. Uh, I'm gonna follow uh, Applied Hydrology by Chow. Uh, the second uh, book, Engineering Hydrology, if you have any um, basic uh, topics problem you guys need to go through this engineering hydrology book 
because it is your um, junior level class which you guys uh, took uh, the name of the class I think water, uh, water resource management and hydrology uh, I, I guess you follow this engineering hydrology uh, book in some part uh, so if you guys have any problem with uh, some definitions or if you have problem with uh, some basic uh, concept you need to go through this engineering hydrology uh, but mainly as I said we are gonna follow applied hydrology by Chow let's start with the introduction part of hydrology and if we think about it the hydrology is the science of water so it is just occurrence distribution and circulation of water signs so we are going to consider the, the how do we distribute the water circulate the water and occurrence like precipitation and then the, how to distribute to the lakes and then rivers and these uh, surface flows or groundwater, or groundwater flows or uh, subsurface flows. Then the circulation, which is like the evaporation, is gonna go again to atmosphere and it comes back with the precipitation again. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna uh, consider all this, all these three uh, factors. The hydrologists deal with hydrosphere and lithosphere. Which is hydrosphere is 15 km above the atmosphere from the ground to the 15 km above and from ground 1 km below is called lithosphere so as an hydrologist we are dealing 15 km above the atmosphere and 1 km below the atmosphere so 16 km range we are dealing with our all uh, water circulation which is the clouds on the atmosphere or the humidity in the atmosphere and surface flows or subsurface flows and groundwater flows till one kilometer below the ground. As we are familiar with hydrologic cycle in uh, senior, uh, not senior, um, our junior class uh, water so resources uh, management class and hydrology class uh, we are fi familiar with the hydrology cycle uh, as we see here there is an um, evaporation then precipitation which is the atmospheric cycle then after that we are coming through the uh, on the land surface of the land so it pre the precipitation the rain is infiltrated uh, it brings the, the ground water flow, subsurface flows and surface flows all together is going to be uh, gathered on the, let's say, the sea or the ocean or let's say the river, okay? So then after that, uh, because of the sun, is going to again uh, evaporate and it goes through again to atmosphere come back to find the uh, cold weather uh, the face with the cold weather and then or like um, they say suitable condition and then it precipitate again uh, all this through is a cold hydrologic cycle um, uh, we are familiar with it um, but I'm gonna uh, make it like a little, little bit maybe uh, make detail la later uh, for right now, let's just uh, familiarize the what is the hydrologic cycle. As I said, the evaporation, precipitation, infiltration. Uh, as you remember, uh, transpiration from the um, trees and then the grass, right? Um, and evapotranspiration. Uh, all we are familiar with the hydrologic hydrology classes another important uh, parameters uh, is word water quantities uh, we need to go through like we need to understand like uh, 
the the main sources of the water where it comes and then what is the percentage of it how we are gonna have the water so sources where we need to look at it the oceans uh, as we see here in this table is 96.5 percent of the uh, total water so oceans covers 96.5 groundwater is gonna cover for fresh and saline different types fresh as we can drink and then saline is with the salty water so we cannot use as in tap water uh, we have 0.676 and 0.93 almost like uh, 1.6 right 1.6 percent of groundwater we have uh, polar ice is 1.7 soil moisture is very neglected 0 0.0012 uh, ice and snow 0 0.025 which is also uh, can be neglected and we have lakes lakes as you see uh, fresh and saline which is total 0 0.06 uh, 13 percent of total force uh, water which is also neglected um, rivers marshes biological water atmospheric water this all is gathered together almost like uh, not even one percent so groundwater oceans and the uh, polar ice is our main source source of uh, total water Uh, this is a schematic sketch of catchment or for river A, let's say, uh, for the head station M. As you see here, uh, we have the tributary. All these tributaries are getting together uh, for the river A and at uh, station M, uh, we can see uh, the, all this tributary comes together and then uh, flow out of the catchment area uh, this is um, we are familiar with uh, also hydrologic classes so this is introduction I am just giving the I just making you guys remember all these terms this this is catchment area just a schematic uh, sketch uh, so um, you are gonna familiar uh, you are gonna be familiar with this concept and uh, we will go through all these hydrologic cycles again and uh, we are going to solve questions that is going to be more logical and then you will understand uh, clearly. For a catchment area, we need to calculate a water budget equation, which is the continuity equation, as we are familiar with the fluid mechanics class. Input and inflow minus outflow is equal to the storage, the total storage or net storage. Let's say. So in this equation, I represent the inflow volume in a catchment during delta T. O is outflow volume from a catchment during delta T. And delta S is change in storage of a catchment during delta t for a catchment the water budget equation can be written as p minus r minus g minus e minus t is equal to delta s which is delta s as we state is uh, storage right so what is our inflow what can be inflow in our hydrologic cycle as we think is rain or we can say snow or so on which is generally we call precipitation so our precipitation only inflow of uh, our continuity equation so which is represented by p minus the outflow 
which can be the runoff, the surface runoff, or ground, groundwater net outflow, or evaporation, or transpiration. So all this rain, uh, so runoff, uh, uh, groundwater flow, evaporation, and transpiration uh, can be uh, considered as outflow. If you subtract from our precipitation, which is inflow, we are going to have the delta S. If delta S is minus, it means we are losing the water in this catchment area. If it is positive, it means we are gaining water in this catchment area. In water budget equation, as we see here, again, P minus R minus G minus E minus T is equal to delta S. And as we uh, explain the P represent precipitation, R is surface runoff, G is net groundwater outflow from a catchment, E is evaporation, and T is transpiration. Uh, also, the storm, the, the storage S consists of three components, which is surface water storage, water in storage as soil moisture and water in storage as groundwater. So when we talk about the storage, which is not delta S, which is not change in storage, it's just as the storage is uh, consists of three components, which is, as I said, surface uh, water storage is represented as S, water in storage as soil moisture SSM, water in storage as groundwater SG. Uh, right now I'm gonna stop over here and I'm gonna solve two questions uh, in different media okay uh, so after that after I solve these two questions we can continue our introduction part.